Welcome to Hearts of Gold, where Gold Award Girl Scouts share their experiences earning the Gold Award, the highest award a Girl Scout can earn. Hearts of Gold is presented by the Grow and Share Network in conjunction with Off the Walter Media Productions. Welcome to Hearts of Gold. Today we have Elizabeth with us. Hi, Elizabeth. Can you tell us about your Gold Award Girl Scout project? Yeah, so my, goal, uh, my Girl Scout Gold Award project was um, raising the funds and building a trap shooting range, which is a type of shooting sport um, that's um, vastly growing in the United States. So what I did was I started out with an idea and um, with a passion for trap shooting. And I said, hey, I want to shoot more and I want to be able to not drive an hour to get to trap shooting practice because that really limited my ability to um, shoot as much as I'd like. So um, I came up with the idea with my mom. I sat down. I said, hey, I want to do this. I know this is a very lofty goal, but um, I'm ready to do it. Um, we started out, and the very first problem we ran into was finding land. So um, obviously with um, shooting sports, um, when you shoot a weapon, it, it, it travels some, some uh, distance, and you have to make sure all the safety parameters and things are in place so that no one gets hurt. So um, we found land eventually, and we raised funds over a year and a half, uh, almost two years, um, to produce a trap shooting facility, as of now, just trap shooting, um, with two trap shooting fields um, that my high school that I graduated, uh, graduated from, that their team can shoot at, and also the surrounding high schools. And I understand that, as you, as you mentioned, um, you used to have to travel over an hour in order to be able to trap shoot. Um, and you and your brother were extremely involved in shooting sports and um, are very, very good at it. Um, and so you wanted, obviously you wanted to bring this closer, but another aspect of your project was by having it closer and being able to have the high school have a team and such. Um, another root cause was that you were able to promote gun safety. So can you, can, can you share some background on gun safety and how learning how to skeet shoot can encourage gun safety in, the, in our communities? Yeah, so um, a huge um, problem within um, just uh, the big debate of, of politics and things like that is gun safety um, and it, should people have guns and things like that. Um, I never really got into it. My only concern was if we do have people handling weapons, we need to make sure that they know how to handle them and they know how to handle them safely. Um, because in my experience, um, shooting sports has brought me closer to um, many, many, many people. So I've been able to hang out with some very young kids and uh, be able to learn from them and their creativity and their spark of life. And also be able to hang out with these guys that are like 95 years old and learn from all of their life experiences. So I'm um, being able to bring a very solid environment um, of people combined with safe weapons handling was a big goal for me. So with that, um, trap shooting is actually the safest um, high school um, sport as of right now. So least amount of injuries. So you, you, you get the injuries in basketball, football, concussions, this, that. Um, trap shooting has actually produced the least amount of injuries and um, we do have firearms. So a lot of people are like, oh, it's dangerous when actually um, it's been very safe. From a young age, I started shooting um, with my dad and my brothers. Um, so my oldest brother is a Marine Corps infantry officer. So I'm very involved with weaponry and things like that. So I'm just ingrained in my, in my mind, hey, handling a weapon is a serious thing. Um, it's also a gift to be able to do something um, that's very fun for you. So um, what we did is I said, hey, let's get this closer so more kids can shoot, more kids can learn about the sport. Um, and more kids can learn about all sorts of weapons because shotguns are one thing, um, but all, all of these weapons um, have the ability to inflict um, um, hurt on someone else, but they also have the ability to protect people and all sorts of things like that. So the big thing was just exposing people to a sport that not only teaches gun safety, but teaches patience, camaraderie, and just allows you to have a ton of fun. Um, with that, it's just you get, if you get an opportunity closer to people, um, this is how they're going to pick it up. And with that, um, hopefully save more lives, not in just so people don't hurt other people, but so other people can protect others that can't protect themselves. So you mentioned that the biggest um, hurdle initially in your project was um, finding the land. And so you did end up having a partner 
partnership with the county on the land usage. So do you want to give some background on how that came about and what that was? Yeah, so me starting this project was a very quick dive into the deep end of the business world. Um, so the biggest thing is a lot of people don't want to support a project that has no backing yet, right? So um, the biggest thing is getting it off the ground. So a lot of people were telling me, hey, I'm not going to, I'm not going to donate any money because you don't have any land to produce this project. And then I'd go back to someone who has land and they say, you know, I don't want to give you land until you have money because then I'm giving you land and nothing's going to happen with it. So back and forth, back and forth of, no, I can't give you land until you have money. No, I can't give you money until you have land. And so we did this back and forth for months and I was so close to giving up on this project. I was like, mom, it's never going to happen. We can't do it. No one's going to give us anything. And then I was able to partner up with a county supervisor who um, then informed me that, hey, if you go and you meet with the county um, board of supervisors, we might be able to give you this plot of land um, that is near uh, the transfer station and you can shoot out there and it's a long-term lease and, and we'd love to gift it to you. Um, to be able to build this range to, to help the community. And so I went and I gave my pitch and I, and I gave it my all and they ended up approving it. So we got the land and it really took off from there. And you did do a lot of fundraising in order to be able to build um, and support the pieces in order to put together the shooting range. Um, I know that, for example, you had to build a pit toilet and you had to have some research and experience with that. Um, can you tell us about um, how you went about working on getting funds and then what you did with the funds in order to actually create the range? Yes. Yeah, so um, I am beyond blessed to have two parents that are insanely intelligent um, in the business world. So my mom um, was amazing, amazing lady who just taught me everything about cold calls. Cold calls are a gift, um, even though they're, they're nerve wracking. Um, when you just call someone up and they're not expecting it and you're on the phone, it's really hard for someone to say no. <laughs> so um, just learning the aspects of cold calls and um, just going to someone's store and being like, hey, this is who I am. This is my project. Please donate. Um, going up and them seeing you, it's really hard for them to say no. So it, the more you got involved, the more you asked, um, the more successful uh, um, I became. So um, with that, I, what I did was I just called an immense list of people every single day, every single day. I'd get home from school and I'd work on this project. Um, I would go to school to whatever sports practice I had and then just call, call, call. And it ended up being you just finally got that one call where someone said yes. The fact is, if you call enough people, someone's going to say yes, especially with a, a, a project such as this one um, with such support in the community I, I lived in. A lot of people did like shooting sports. So that really helped. So I just went and I would look in the phone book. I'd ask different companies around my town, hey, who do you recommend to do this job? And um, different figureheads in the community and they'd recommend people and I'd give them a call. And if they said no, then I'd, I'd say, hey, do you have any recommendations for anyone who I could call? And so just kept on asking and um, was able to get um, some like FOSS um, construction in Brooklyn, Iowa. Um, FOSS excavation and construction, they helped with my excavation. Um, they, they, they were amazing. They did a great job. Um, we had tons of other companies that were involved. Um, absolute, um, all, all, can't even name them all, that said, yes, we'll help. Um, and that was just because I decided to call and keep calling and keep calling and keep calling because someone can say yes and then they never contact you again. So as long as you just say per persistent and some people would say annoying, but um, as long as you get your job done, I I I'd say it's good. So it was just beyond busy work of calling people and just continuing to ask. And what work had to, did, had to go into actually building? The range then? Oh, um, a lot. Uh, so it was, this was a big project that um, I wouldn't say it was a burden on me, but it definitely was a huge time commitment. So once we got all the funds, um, we started to um, build the range. 
So the first thing was we got this plot of land that was not flat whatsoever. It, it, it was like a downward slope and then a huge drop off. Um, and so we had to bring in um, some guys to do the excavation and flatten this land out. And a lot of change happened in like no time. Um, they, they brought the biggest machinery out I've ever seen in my entire life, like these huge um, boulders and things like that. So, and they leveled it off. And once they leveled it off, um, we had to bring um, the concrete guys in. So we brought Absolute in and they um, helped to pour the concrete slabs for the trap shooting range where you sit, like uh, where you stand and shoot. Um, we had to have some other guys come out and dig the holes for the trap shooting house that sits in the ground. And um, those are like six feet tall, um, the, the housing themselves. So they have to go like four feet in the ground. Manats um, came out and gave us the old skim off. They were redoing some roads and gave us um, the gravel off the sides of it and put it down um, as a road to get back into the range. We had a company bring out um, the the clubhouse that was put out there, a little clubhouse. We had people come out and put the um, septic tank in, the outhouse, like the top of it on, like anything you could think of. Um, we had to get all these people to come in and do it. Um, and most of them were absolutely amazing when it came to helping and they said you know hey we might need to charge you this amount but we're going to help you here or we're going to help you here and in and, and every single time they did that it helped because um, it's a very expensive project um and so we had to have wiring done also so just just a ton of of stuff um that needed done and all these all these amazing people um came in to assist in that and ended up getting it done and then you have another partner that um, is now um, continuing to maintain the range and um, organize it. And so can you tell us about that partner and how um, they helped you during your project and how the transition from when your project was over to when they completely took over, how all that happened? Yeah, so um, the one of the biggest things about shooting ranges is you need insurance, you need bylaws, you need all these things that all these businesses need that I had no idea as a junior in high school. So um, not only was this a fun experience, but it was a huge learning experience. Um, so I needed, I was like, mom, I cannot write all these bylaws. I don't know what any of this is. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know any of this. So we came up with the idea to um, partner up with the PCSA, which is the Powshee County Shooting Shooters Association. What that is, is it's, um, it's an organization that has three ranges. And what they did is they said, hey, we'll vote you in if you build it all. And we'll take care of it once you leave. Because I said, you know, I, I want to build this project, but I want to go to college. <laughs> I, I, I can't stay here and take care of this. So, um, and my, uh, my parents have to work. So, would you be able to take this up? And so, they voted me in. They voted yes. Um, and so they picked up my range as a, another entity to their um, organization. And with that, um, the, all their bylaws, their insurance, their membership, all that went on to them. So then they take care of all that. They now mow it, they maintain it, they let the members in, they let all, they take care of all of it. So all I did, I, I was the contractor. I built it. I raised the funds to do it and then I built it. And now they're taking care of it, which um, I'm very, very happy about. What was your biggest challenge during your project and how did you work through it? Uh, you know what, as a, as a kid, it's really hard to stay very dedicated to something, especially um, in an 18 year old's lifetime, two years is a very large amount. So being able to just stay in it and say, you know what, this is a hard point right now, but it's worth it. The end goal is worth it was really hard for me because not only were my friends hanging out, going to the basketball game, doing this, doing that, and I'm at home making these phone calls, going to talk to these people, everyone else is sleeping in on the weekends, I have to wake up and drive an hour to go talk to somebody. Um, just all those things where they were, hey, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hang out, we're gonna go do this, and I said, you know what, I, I gotta work on my project. That was a sacrifice in itself, but it, um, Helped me got, get to where I am today, and I'm very, very happy for my with my decisions. Um, 
never would I take it back. Never would I say, Hey, I didn't want to build this range. So the biggest thing was just the time commitment and the constant grind of it all, because it, it not only wears on you, but like my mom was, and my mom and dad were huge supporters of it. I, I couldn't have done any of, it, of this without my family. And they were, um, you, you know, you get frustrated and you get mad at them and it, it's not their fault, but you just, you just get mad and you're like, and then you end up working out and you're like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I got mad at you. I'm just very frustrated. This is, this is so frustrating that people keep on saying no. I want them to say yes. So persisting through the no's. Because after you get like 10 no's as a kid, you're like, oh, I'm never going to get it. But then that 11th one is a yes. So just the, just the consistency of just pushing through and saying, you know what, this next one is going to be a yes. Because the more you say that, the more you're going to call, and then eventually it's finally going to be a yes. So the Girl Scout Gold Award Project um, has an 80-hour suggestion for hours. Um, I, I expect that you probably exceeded that. Do you remember how many hours you put in and or how many hours you others contributed to your project? So I never um, really kept track of the hours like that. Um, I never considered it like that. Um, I don't when I take on a project, it's more a start to finish. It's not, hey, what are my minimums? It's, mm -hmm. hey, how, how far can we take this? How awesome can we make this? So um, I never really counted um, the hours, but, man, I would, I would say well over, over double. I've been, I was out there for 12 hours some days talking to people, doing this, doing that. Every, like, the whole day on Saturday, I'd be talking to people. And it ended up taking, I started at the beginning of my junior year and I didn't end it until two weeks before I left for college. So it, it almost a whole two years. And that was consistently working on it. Um, hours and hours a week. Um, I would never ever probably work less than five hours a week for those two, for those two years. So whatever that math is, um, <laughs> Um, I, I couldn't tell you exactly, but that was definitely not just me. Um, we had the, the, the blessing to have all the, the community members in, in Brooklyn and in Guernsey and Malcolm and Grinnell and Victor and all these different towns in Iowa um, that had people that came out and helped. And we also had my teammates uh, who helped with some fundraisers. And we had all the workers who came out and did the excavation work, which took hours upon hours. And it, it just all these people and my mother who, bless her soul, helped me every every day that I worked on it. And she would even, um, while I was at school, put lists together and work her butt off all day so that when I got home, I could start working and we could get stuff done. So not only did I put in a lot of hours, my mom did. My dad helped me with financial models because um, he, he does finance for stuff for a living and um, all these people just help me get it done. So just tons and tons of hours. I could not tell you how many and all, but a lot, well over the recommended 80. <laughs> so while you were working on your project, were, were there any things that really stick out in your mind as a, oh, this is why I'm doing this project? I am a people person, 100%. Um, I actually just, um, for school, we had to take a, a personality test because we're in leadership courses here. And we had to take a personality tests on extroversion and introversion and all this stuff. And I was a 99th percentile extrovert. So I, I, I can't really get any more extrovert. So being able to improve my public speaking skills and to improve my like human relations skills um, was really really a fun experience for me. Um, so I'd say just the aspect of being able to meet some amazing people who have the biggest hearts that just want to give back to their community was a blessing for me. Um, and also to be able to learn so much about business, about finance, about um, government, about law, all these different things that went in um, was really amazing for me. But 100%, it was being able to meet people that wanted to help the community as much as I did, or if not as much as I did, way more. Um, so just being able to, to meet more and more people and meet people who really love to work for a living, 
who, who just like get down and dirty and just say, we're going to do it. That was definitely um, the best part. And now it, it, it's very rewarding because now all these kids get to shoot and have fun just as much, just as much as fun uh, or just as much fun as I have had shooting. Hopefully they can have even more. What do you wish you knew before you started your project that you know now? The one thing I'd want someone to tell me is sit me down and say, you know what, this is going to be a grind, but it's going to be well worth it. It's going to be well worth it. And the people you're going to meet and the things you're going to do, the things you're going to learn are going to help you not only tomorrow, the next week, the next year, but your entire lifetime. So it, it just the, the lessons you learn within working on your Girl Scout Gold War, Girl Scout Gold War project because it's such a um, community related project. It, the lessons you learn don't just transmit to like the next year. They they help you throughout everything. And um, I definitely would want someone to sit me down and say, you know what, this is this is worth it. And the things you're gonna learn now are gonna help you succeed not only as a person, not only as a family member, but like as an American and as a, a contributor contributor to society. You actually are attending a pretty prestigious school right now. And so do you want to share with us what that school is and what you had to go through in order to get into that school and how your gold award may have helped in that process? Yeah, so I currently attend the United States Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs. Um, we're one of the three major um, military institutes in the country. So there's the Naval Academy, there's the Military Academy or West Point, and then there's us. Um, so with that, um, we are a all military based institute. So um, we teach how to be an officer and we get a degree at the same time. With applying to the academies, it's, it's a very difficult process. Um, all of them are below 10% acceptance rates. Um, and I took a very interesting path um, to get here. Um, I actually went to regular college for a year and participated in Naval um, ROTC um, and ended up applying to the academies again and got in here and decided to come. Um, but everything that goes into your application to get into schools like this um, matter. So every, every single thing you can put into your application helps you get in. So having su such a large amount of community service hours, having such a, a large amount of leadership hours because of that project, um, having all of the interactions with all these different people helped me put more into my application. And with that, I, I personally would say, you know, my, my brain alone did not get me into this school. Um, there's some um, insanely smart people at this school. Um, it was my, I, I think it was my ability to just put my head down and grind it out and say, you know what, we can get this done. And my ability to stay dedicated in that and my leadership skills that I honed within the building of my range. So, um, or not my range, the range. Uh, definitely getting into a school like this or getting into any school, getting into whatever institute you'd like to go to, it 100% it helps to get your Girl Scout Gold Award project because that not only shows that you're dedicated to your community, but it also shows that you can put your head down and stay dedicated to a project through the whole thing to the finish. It also shows that you just kind of are, are just okay with a little hard work. What other Girl Scout experiences do you have that you'd like to share with the audience? You know, the one that, this blows my mind. I don't know why I remember this. Um, but when I was a daisy, when we still wore the white t-shirts with just the iron on pedals and stuff, I remember getting my last pedal and it was like the most amazing experience. I was so excited. Um, I don't know why, um, but I, that's one thing I remember. Um, I thought it was really cool, um, which is really weird to look back on, but um, not a lot of experiences other than um, I attempted to get my bronze award, but hit some roadblocks um, and was not able to earn that. That's on me, I didn't say dedicated, right? So all in all, everyone's experience is gonna be different, but every experience is a good experience. Um, a lot, even though you say, oh, that was dumb or anything, it doesn't matter. Every experience goes into your experience pot and that, that helps you to do better down the road. So 
Um, yeah, me was just getting my last petal as a daisy. And actually, when I was just home for Christmas break, uh, I found my little brownie vest, and I couldn't even get it over one arm. So uh, that that was fun seeing that. Um, it reminded me of um, just hanging out with my mom, which was cool, um, and hanging out with my friends as a little kid. So just just that. I don't know. I have a really good relationship with my parents. So um, just being able to like look back and be like, man, being a little kid was awesome. It is is pretty fun, and Girl Scouts helps me do that because um, I was able to um, do all these different things um, with just meeting people. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with the audience? The only thing is, if, if you want to get your gold award, don't be scared. There's nothing to be scared about. Um, you should never be scared of hard work. You should never be scared of um, what we, the kids call the grind. Um, you know, you don't, don't be scared. A lot of, a lot of people now I feel like are taught to like dip their toe in into the pool of life, but you know, um, it's definitely worth it to dive right in. Find something you're passionate about. Um, mine was shooting sports. Um, I still continue to shoot a lot and love the sport. So um, being able to do something I was passionate about helped and it kept me dedicated. So pick something you're passionate about and you know what, just go for it. What is your favorite s'mores trick? I'm a pretty basic gal. I like to just burn it. <laughs> I burn my marshmallow. Um, I, I just stick it in the fire and let it let it turn all crispy. So, um, but my my favorite thing is a lot of people do the graham cracker in the the chocolate. I just get chips Ahoy cookies. You get the two in one, and it's a lot better. So, I'd say that's that's a basic thing is burn the marshmallow and then chips Ahoy. <laughs> all righty then. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining us this week. Please be sure to click subscribe so you always know when a new episode has been released. And don't forget to power your passion and conquer your challenges. The Hearts of Gold program is brought to you by the Grow and Share Network in partnership with Off the Walter Media Productions. If you want to share your story of how you earned your gold award, send an email to growandshare at outlook.com. All episodes of the Hearts of Gold program are available to view at youtube.com slash Cheryl Robinson. That's youtube.com slash S-H-E-R-Y-L Cheryl Robinson. Thank you for listening. Take care, and we'll see you next time.